Hey guys, it's Carl CDC, and today I have a review of the Twisby Eco, pretty famous pen. Uh, so we're gonna go through the positives, the negatives, and my conclusion. Let's just get right to it, okay? We'll also have a writing sample. I like to start with some size comparisons. So as a size comparison, this is the Kaweco port. This is the first fountain pen that I bought, which led me to buy this one with, you know, a little bit more money. These are the same two pens, but posted. You don't really need to post the Eco though, so. They're about the same size when you have them like that. Uh, next size comparison would be the uh, Visconti Rembrandt, which is a pen I bought after this one. I bought this one used, and then I bought the Eye of the Tiger on it, but here it is posted. So pretty cool, pretty similar. And then we have the Ballpoint Pen Parker Jotter, which is a very popular pen that people use pretty often and then this is the zebra which is my knock around pen um, i really enjoy using that pen just to toss around having a backpack super reliable full metal construction we'll start with the positives right away so in the positive this is a very affordable piece at 30 dollars by the way i'm sorry about my cut yeah i don't the band-aids kind of bother me at this stage of my healing so i'm not wearing one apologize so the positive is very affordable, only $30. And the pictures, it doesn't do it justice online or even videos like this one. Uh, some Instagram photos do do it justice, but it's a very classy piece, especially if you fill it up with a dark or matching ink. I have a very dark uh, green just because I don't want to write black. Uh, if you have a fountain pen, you want to have uh, an interesting color co to, to be with it. So I chose the dark black from... I'll write the name right here because I forgot it. I mean, no disrespect, I really enjoy the ink. So the second positive about this pen right away when you buy it will be the piston filling mechanism. As you can see, this has a hexagonal uh, texture which makes it very easy to turn. So you can see the, the piston right there. And if you turn it um, counterclockwise, it pushes it down like that. And actually, if I continue, I will push out the ink that's in here. But when it's empty, you turn it on clockwise and it will pull ink forward, uh, which is very convenient to just have that. And it can actually be a very clean process. I will show you the bottles I've been using. Uh, these are samples from Goulet Pen. And so you just open one up. You know, this one's empty. This one was uh, Noodles Black. i fill up a black pen with that. Uh, so you, you would just dip your pen up to about right here in your ink and you would just turn that clockwise and that would fill it up. So that's a very, that's a positive thing because sometimes you have a baby cartridge converter like on the Kuwaitco and it's not enough ink and you have to take the pen apart to do it. So it, it works, this thing works, but it's not as efficient, I would say. It's not as clean. Uh, I would say as the Twispy built-in mechanism, and you're only and you're getting all this for another five dollars, which is what a converter would be. A converter is something that you put inside a pen uh, that converts it into a piston or vacuum or whatever type of filler. So the next positive is very aesthetically pleasing. This black one has done me right. I've been taking a lot of Instagram photos. You can post it if you want, making it a very large uh, posted pen. The dot at the, at the on the cap that's red makes it very distinct. Like people know this is a Twispy. People that know, know. Uh, most people won't know. Uh, but usually I would post this. I would keep this next to my notes like that. And I would have my notebook here with me. And just write. I would just leave the cap there. It's almost a, uh, a fashion accessory, I would say. The nib uh, worked well on this particular model right away. Uh, they come in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 stub and 1.5 stub. So what stub means is a little rectangular right now. Um, so I haven't written with this one on a few days right now. Break. Dan. Gilder-ish. So it's a little rectangular-ish. Um, as you can see, my horizontal lines are skinnier than my vertical lines. 
Uh, it's more evident there. But it gives your letter a lot of character. And honestly, I've been taking notes at church and other meetings that I go to uh, with this particular pen. And the notes I take are just more fun to take. You don't even have to put that much effort in your writing. Also, my signatures, when I get a receipt, I usually just do a B. Uh, but with this one, I've been doing my whole... Well, it's a little dry. I haven't been using this. But with this, uh, I usually just do a B. But with this one, I've been writing um, my whole last name. This is really absorbent paper as well. Um, don't know what it is. Uh, it was a present from a good friend, and I haven't asked them what it was. I've just been enjoying this paper. It's really classy, really heavy. But yeah, when I sign receipts with the Kaweco, which is my daily toss around, I would just... I haven't been using this one either, so it's a little dry. I would just write the biggest letter B I can on the receipt, <clears throat> and yeah, I call it a day. My wife doesn't like that, by the way, but I, I, I enjoy a, a big letter B. Again, with the positives, it's affordable. It has its own filling mechanism. That's pretty cool. You can see through it is another positive, I would think. Uh, if you don't like the aesthetic, well, this pen might not be for you, but I like the aesthetic of being able to see it through. I like the aesthetic of the black and the chrome. And I like the point being red. It reminds me of uh, Louboutins, uh, you know, red bottoms. Uh, so it's a little bit of a fashion statement to write with a fountain pen. I like the stub, uh, so I like the tips that I come with. This is the only pen that I would buy a second and keep two of them. I like to have a, a, a fine now that I have a 1.1, and I would like to have a 1.5 broad, um, just because it sounds really fun. Uh, Goulet doesn't offer it, so I haven't uh, purchased the 1.5, and I've just been thinking about like the next color I would like to get, which is another positive. Uh, it, it continuously has different colors that you can buy. Uh, this is the standard black, $30. Um, I, I've seen some $60 variants. I think they're in metal, um, which sound, you know, good to go. I believe Twisby is made in, uh, this one's made in Taiwan. Um, so, but I don't know if Twisby is a German company. I'll write it right here if it is. Um, this particular pen is made in Taiwan, not China, but Taiwan. The fit and finish is, is far superior to a Kaweco. So if you own a Kaweco uh, already, you kind of know that the fit and finish is a little wonky. It's a good to go pen. This is my knock around. I toss it in my pocket, I toss it in my backpack, and it just writes. I uh, have it in a medium uh, nib and blue ink. So we'll move on and talk about the negatives of this pen. Uh, so in the negatives of this pen, uh, I tried to have it as an everyday carry pen and i scratched it right away i'll take a photo of that oh there it is right there so you guys know that i don't mind scratching my everyday carry you guys know like this twist b right here it's all scratched up and i, I, I enjoy it i like it uh, however the aesthetics for this one um it's simply i did not like the scratch i i want to keep it pristine i know it's not expensive um, I have this Visconti, for example. This one's one hundred and seventy dollars, I believe, one hundred and sixty maybe, one hundred and fifty. Uh, and then the Finials fifteen. Um, this one's a medium nib, so this one's a lot more expensive. And actually, I'd be willing to carry this one as an everyday carry more than the Eco, and it's because the scratch looks bad on it. Just doesn't look great. And it has this thing that might move up and down uh, through the day. Um, not that nervous about that, but the scratches conjointly with that makes me not want to carry this as an EDC. However, I still carry this if I'm going to church. Uh, if I go to church, I just put it right next to my notebook like this. And I just carry it with me carefully. Uh, when I carry it to a different meeting, I will put it in the shirt pocket. And again, I will be careful. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of you guys don't know, but I'm a construction worker. So as a construction worker, I'm not going to be every day carrying this. And that's obvious, you know? Don't 
you know, don't beat up your stuff if you don't want to beat up your stuff. Uh, I have really expensive gear that I scratch all the time and stuff happens to it. These are $200 headphones that my puppy chewed on. And I don't mind that at all. I think it looks cool. I think it, I think it's part of me, you know, my rough guy. Like, for example, this cut. You know, I was working on the bucket of a Bobcat tractor and, you know, peace fell on me. <laughs> I have wear and tear myself. Uh, but in some pieces, I just, I didn't like the this piece I, I think it looks really classy for $30 um so in the negatives it scratches easy uh another negative that when you post it it's a little bit big and you can still turn it the um, you can still you might still be able to turn the piston when you post it uh, apparently I can't do it right now but I've done it before uh so that's a negative I I would think the stubs can particularly be a little bit scratchy on paper this one has not been uh, scratchy at all uh, this is a log and jotter uh, notebook by the way guys this is pretty affordable I wouldn't say cheap this is pretty affordable paper and this is stub so it's, it's gonna be really uh, flowy I would say but here's the writing sample uh, so we'll write mm, Our responsibility is the predecessor of greatness, Winston Churchill. Um, so I, I might have spelled predecessor wrong, and this might be the wrong quote too, but I'm not looking at any screen or reading it off of Google. It's just a quote I like from Winston Churchill. Responsibility is the predecessor of greatness. Um, so as you can see, even though this is cheap paper, it didn't really um, leak in too much. There is going to be some ghosting but I don't use both sides of the paper. Anyway, this is cheap paper, so if you wanna write like on both sides, just get different kinds of paper. So this is a log and jotter paper. I'm writing with the uh, twist B eco black. Oh, what's the ink color? I don't know ink on known <laughs> again i will write the um the type of ink and so with uh stubs by the way guys you have to have a certain angle for it to write because it's like a rectangle um type of nib so you know it's a little bit more difficult to write than a regular nib but you will find the angle that you desire. Uh, sooner or later, you will get used to writing and taking notes with this uh, particular pen. Uh, okay, so in my conclusion, there's a ton of positives, only, you know, a few debatable negatives. Uh, also, my notebook cover is from Lost Dutchman. He's a maker here in Arizona, pretty cool guy. Um, I'm trying to design my own uh, notebook cover and have a friend make it for me uh, but yeah this is twist b eco I, I enjoy it i recommend it i think 30 dollars sure might be a lot of money um especially at these times but if you're gonna try out a fountain pen i think i, I would personally skip the uh sport if i was not in construction i am in construction i'm an active guy so the uh sport i do not regret buying it i might even purchase like an aluminum or brass one later on uh, but if I wasn't th the guy I am which is you know I am the guy I am so but if I was just going to church going to meetings etc going to school uh, I think I would skip it and I would go directly with the eco twist peep. if you guys want like a full video person let me know and I will make one uh, thank you guys for all the madness thank you for the views the likes the subscribes I appreciate you all a lot uh so yeah subscribe bye bye